Hollywood is lying to you. This is beyond unlikely. Elevators rarely ever fall like you see in the movies. In fact, nobody has died from a snapped cable in a modern passenger elevator. So what makes them so safe? Well, it turns out elevators have a life-saving feature that most of us have forgotten about. There's around one elevator for every 344 people in the US. And American elevators make 18 billion passenger trips per year. For a mode of transportation that we take so often, you'd think that there'd be fewer myths about how they work, especially since they're so safe. Elevators are way safer than escalators, and there's a lot more of them. They're also significantly safer than cars. Otis and the OG Elevator. Elevators have been around since the Greeks, but were honestly really unsafe. The ancient elevator was invented by Greek scientist Archimedes around 236 BC. They were primitive, using pulleys and winches controlled by a worker pulling a wheel and weren't regularly used for human transport. Until Elijah Otis came along more than 2,000 years later. As a young factory worker in the 1820s, he watched workmen use elevators to haul heavy goods, and he also saw the ropes snap a lot. At the time, the idea of a person using an elevator was ridiculous. But Otis had an idea. When he was 40 years old and working in a bedstead factory with his sons, they decided to try and make what they called a safety elevator. It had a break under the car, protecting cargo and passengers from finicky ropes. His solution was to have the shaft and car act as a ratchet system. The shaft was lined with mechanical teeth that would snag a car if it fell. He and his sons quit the Bedstead factory and started Otis Brothers & Co. But they didn't get orders for months. They needed publicity. Things were looking dire until the 1853 New York World's Fair. Otis erected an open elevator chute and car with one rope and gathered a huge crowd. Then he ordered an axeman to cut the rope while Otis was on the elevator, three stories up. The elevator fell, but only a few inches, until it was caught by the ratchet system. After that, the orders came flooding in. His invention made elevators commonplace, because people now knew that elevators were safe to ride in. It helped make modern-day skyscrapers possible. Otis's safety brake is now only one part of what makes elevators so safe. Modern innovations have added even more levels of protection. Take its electronics, for example. If electronics detect that the car is falling, it jams a metal brake from underneath the car into a guide rail in the wall, and friction causes the car to stop. Besides that, things are largely the same. The biggest changes have been to materials. As cars have been able to travel faster, the old materials couldn't stand up to the heat of friction. And so, they were upgraded. How elevators work today. Elevators today have two to eight woven steel cables that lift and lower them to each floor. These cables are still referred to as ropes by technicians as homage to their 19th century hemp predecessors. But don't be fooled. Each cable is required to be able to hold the weight of the whole elevator and passengers. The number of ropes on an elevator depends on something called the factor of safety. The factor of safety is the ratio of the maximum stress that something can withstand to the stress that it is designed to withstand under normal operation. The most common factor of safety for elevator supports is 11. 
So that means the combined rope strength must be able to hold 11 times the mass of one fully loaded car. The steel cables bolted to the top of the car loop over a sheave. A sheave is a pulley with a grooved rim surface that is secured to the top of the elevator shaft. The sheave's grooves grip the steel cables. So when an electric motor rotates the sheave, the cables move too. The most misunderstood part of elevators, the brakes. Elevators can't just go shooting down the shaft at the speed of sound like they do in the movies. Elevators actually have two to three types of brakes on each car. One very common type is next to the sheave. It's called an electrically released brake because, well, its resting position is fully clamped down on the cables and requires electricity to be released. So that means when the power goes out, the brake clamps down, which is why you're not supposed to use elevators in an emergency. There are also counterweights on the opposite ends of the cables attached to the car. They weigh slightly more than an empty car and slightly less than a fully loaded car. If all other safety measures failed, the weights would cause you to ascend in the car if you were the only one in there, or cause a slowly accelerating descent in a fully loaded car. When the car meets the top or bottom of the shaft, most cable elevators also have a built-in shock absorber, a typically a piston, in an oil-filled cylinder. It's not going to be comfortable, but the goal is for optimal survival. The third common type of brake has been in use since it was invented in the 1840s by Elijah Otis, the bottom brake. Myths and why we have them. As we have advanced mechanically and then electrically, elevators have become a part of our daily lives and people have started to understand less about how they work. That's led to a lot of speculation, which has led to urban legend. In lots of movies, like we saw earlier, there's a lot of free falling. But this can't actually happen in real life because of Otis's invention. An elevator without a cable would come to a halt against the friction of the chute. But why is this so common in media if it's so impractical? It's because they're playing into our fears about elevators. After all, elevators go against a lot of our human impulses. We are voluntarily facing small spaces, heights, and lack of control. An elevator falling is all of those primal fears come true. But there have been unsettling accidents in the past few years, but they're a result of human error. For example, in November 2018, six people boarded an elevator at the John Hancock Center in Chicago on the 95th floor. But one of the cables snapped and the elevator plunged 84 floors all the way down to the 11th floor. All of them lived with minor injuries. Experts believe that the safety chain had been tampered with. A safety chain is a series of safety devices attached to the elevator where the first one has to be complete for the next to work and so on and so forth. So the electric release clamp has to be locked for the outside elevator doors to open, for the inside elevator doors to open, for example. Maintenance workers were believed to have turned off the safety chain to do maintenance, and then forgotten to turn them back on, resulting in catastrophe. But this is only a handful of cases out of the millions of elevator rides every day. Elevators are safer than almost every other form of transportation. Despite what Hollywood may want you to believe, you don't have anything to worry about. It's probably not going to happen. Do you have a fear of elevators? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you like this video, click subscribe, and ring the bell for post notifications. We'll see you next time.